can be together. The power of his resurrection. Now, I think I've seen you enough now. I don't have to see you a lot. Let me concentrate down here. Paul was an exceptional man of God. Paul. Paul was an exceptional man of God. Whatever he put in his hands, he did it with all the zeal and his strength. He was such a serious man. He never pretended. He never joked. He, be, he never performed a mediocre job. All the assignment, Paul was given. He did it with a lot of zeal. And that's why he said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 6, that concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. Yani, in, the, in, 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 the, in Paul's world, in Paul's world, he was zealous in whatever he wanted to do. So when he was told, when he wanted to persecute the church, he did it with a lot of zeal, persecuting the church. When it came to righteousness, according to the law, Paul was blameless. And most of the things that Paul did were so serious. Even when he went to, to study, he studied it up to the end. Whatever Paul did, he did it up to the excellence, whatever we call excellence. And that's why I say Paul was an exceptional man. Why am I talking about Paul? I'm talking about Paul because he's the one who talked much about the power of his resurrection. And that is found in Philippians chapter 3. We read from verse 8 to verse 11. In the King James Version, he said, Yeah, doubtless. I hope we have it there in King James Version. Yes, KJV. Yeah, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them, but in dag, that I may win Christ. May I stop there a bit? Yani Paul decided to lose everything for the knowledge of Christ Jesus, his Lord, and he suffered loss and counted everything to him as useless. You know, and Doug, Sumunanju and Doug, Mavi, Yangombe. Let me call it Mavi Yangombe. He counted everything as Doug. He never cared or whatever he gained and whatever he lost. For the sake of Christ. And the Bible says, for excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for who I am suffered the loss of all things. Verse 9, he says, And be found in him, and not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. And then verse 10 says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the righteousness of the dead. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are studying the scriptures that Paul wrote. And Father, as we minister, and as I open my mouth to minister to your people, may you bring revelations that are going to touch our hearts, that are going to touch our minds, that are going to touch every part of us, 
that we may understand the commitment that Paul had to know you, O oh Father, and to walk with you, O oh Father. It is amazing how Paul loved you. And as we study how Paul loved you and wanted to know you and the power of your resurrection, that we may also begin to aspire to know who you are and the power of your resurrection. King of glory, as we go through Easter, we want to remember how you died on the cross for our sins and how you resurrected. And that is the power that was there that Paul wanted to understand and know more. Father, we pray that we may also know you so much as Paul did. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Paul really wanted to know who Jesus was so seriously. And he wanted to go deep. And I thank God for today's Rema word that my sister was encouraging us to know, to know Jesus deeper, to get to the depth of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what so or Paul wanted to know. Pertaining righteousness, he was blameless, but in the righteousness of the law. But he wanted now to turn over the righteousness of the law into the righteousness that is of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that when we talk about righteousness, and righteousness is about doing the right thing all the time, we talk about the righteousness of knowing the Lord, not by the law, but by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. This is who Paul is. And I was looking at the last statement, verse 10 and 11, using New Living Translation, and it is very interesting. It says, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 to 11, using New Living Translation, it says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing his death, sharing his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. In other words, Paul was mesmerized by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power that emanated from that. And he even wanted himself almost like to die like Christ and resurrect like Christ. You know, he, he was sold out into knowing the Lord so much that he wanted to experience the suffering that Jesus Christ went through. I am here to see a man in the Bible like Paul. But yes, was if you were son. And I'm looking for the church of Jesus Christ today. Do we have men and women who love Jesus like Paul did? Who wanted even to suffer? To suffer like Christ? Where are these men of today? Where are these women of today? Who wants to know the Lord the way Paul wanted to know the Lord? And the suffering. He was willing to also suffer the way Jesus suffered. Where are the believers that we have today? Sometimes I wonder, why was Paul so zealous? Allow me to have a sip. I wonder why Paul really wanted to love Jesus this way and even to sacrifice and to suffer the way Jesus did. I want to share two experiences that Paul went through. And I'm imagining those experiences are the ones that turned Paul around. And Paul wanted to know this Jesus. 
and the power of his resurrection. Those two experiences, Paul wanted to, must have turned him around. First of all, I think we know Paul was called Saul, right? He was Saul of Tarsus. That time, he didn't know Jesus. But he, he knew the law. And he had studied what everybody who was serious that time knew. He was a serious man in the knowledge of the Jewish culture. And therefore, he, and he, he got into, he became so zealous that this Jesus who people talked about, he did not understand him. Now, when Jesus Christ came to this world, he was born like any other common person. Anywhere. Born in a place that all of you are never born. You are born in a better place than Jesus was born. Is the people who are singing for Jesus when he was born were animals. <laughs> that is how Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And then out of that, Jesus goes to church and begins to read the scripts, the scriptures to the people. And then after that, he begins to say he is from the Father. He begins to say he is even God. <laughs> he begins to tell people, I am Jesus, the Savior of the world. And I think last time I was preaching here, I asked you, who would have believed him? Even you, if you are there, would you have believed him? Because people said, but we know him. We know his brother. We know his mother. We know his father. We know this guy. But he's saying he has come from heaven. He never came from heaven. He was born in Bethlehem. We know. It is tough. It is a tough issue. Jesus says, I am. And that's why people like Paul, who were knowledgeable, said this church that has been started by the disciples of Jesus, we need to stop this business. They are liars. They are conning us. They are cheating us. We don't understand this thing about Jesus. We are still waiting for the Messiah to come. We don't believe this is the Messiah. That is what was happening. Now, Paul of Tarsus, or, or sorry, uh, sorry for this, Kamau says he's going to make this look better. We are waiting. Are you expectant? We are waiting for Kamau to make our sound system good so that it doesn't make the, the things it used to make when we used to preach in the marketplaces many years ago with a horn speaker. Saying, we oh, in the marketplace. Hapo unasema, yesu anaokoa, unasikia, wii, wii. I think we have to move out of that. We are, in the, we are modern. We are now in a new <laughs> dispensation. And therefore, we want the best sound in this place. Hallelujah. It is going to come, isn't it? We are going to give, isn't it? We will give our money. The way you have seen us, we gave and we'll continue giving, and we will never stop giving. And you know those times when we were giving, some of our young people were not working. Akin and John Kimoy were not working. Now they are working, and many others. So they will give. Tuliwaonyesha njia, siwata tufuata. Hallelujah. And others had not joined us, they have joined us. Tumewaonyesha tulipeana, kwa hivu watatufanya nini? Watatufuata. Now, Saul of Tarsus decided to go to the government of the day and collect papers, giving me authority to go and arrest anybody who is preaching Jesus in Damascus. Bring them to Jerusalem, bound. And he was so zealous because whatever Paul wanted to do, he did it with all the zeal that can happen. So he got the papers. And on his, his way to Damascus, he met the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah. <laughs> he met the Lion of Judah. And you know the Lion 
if you meet the lion, it, has, it doesn't have a hand. It has what they call a paw. Is it a paw? Mukona ya simba inaitwa nini kiingereza? Paul. Now, ikikuwekelea hiyo kofi yake hivi. You need to go, you need to go here to the to the Nairobi National Park and look for the lion. Or you travel all the way to to Narok and go to the to the go to the what is it called? to the National Park, Masai Mara, and they see the lion. That thing, when it places that thing on you, on you, you can never survive. Even in big animals are hit by a lion and they fall down. That is what the lion of Judah is, comparatively, and much better than the natural lions that we have. Now, when we look at what happened, in Acts of Apostles, chapter 9. This is one of the encounters I'm sharing with you, and I will share another one if I have time. And then next Sunday, we shall continue from there. Acts chapter 9, verse 1, in King James Version, the Bible says, And so, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and he desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of his ways of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying unto him, So, so, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Verse 7. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And the saw arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Praise the Lord. This encounter must have shocked and mesmerized Paul. Because Paul thought he had all the power in this world. And he had the capacity to do whatever he can because he has letters from the high priest to go and arrest these guys who are calling them disciples of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus after all? It is a man, a poor man, who was born in Bethlehem. He was not even born in a room, not born in a hotel. He was born in some corner, some ghetto. In Kenya, we call them ghetto. He was born in some ghetto. And he is saying he's Jesus, the savior of the world. And he is, he, he, he is, he is, he is, the, he is the Messiah they have been waiting for. This is wrong. So Paul goes out, threatening and ready to kill. He was ready to kill. He was jealous to follow the law and even kill for the sake of the law. Now, when he met Jesus on the way, the voice came, the light came, he fell down on the ground. I call it a slap of the, the Lion of Judah. Bam! He fell on the ground. Down on the ground, he submitted to the Lord. 
Because the first thing he said when the voice asked him, why are you persecuting me? The first thing he woke up and asked, who are you, Lord? He has already discovered there is another Lord. There is another Lord. Submission. God has a way of humbling harangand men and women. God has a way of turning situations. God has a way of undressing your situation. Whatever it is, God has a way of undressing it in a way that is unique. The experience of Paul with the Lord Jesus Christ was unique. God, or Jesus himself, knew Paul was a jealous man to do whatever he is given with all his commitment. And he knew if I come to this man and turn him around, he will do my work with the zealousness that I want. And that's why he met Paul on the way to Damascus. And Paul, down there, he submitted because he discovered what he has seen, he has never seen it again. What the Pharisees, Pharisees are doing, they have never done what I have seen. He was on the ground. And when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see. He was blind. He was useless. He was incumbent. He couldn't do anything. He needed help. He needed support. And that's why he was told, he asked, what must I do? He was told, go to Damascus, and I am going to show you what you must do. Hallelujah. You know the Lord is interesting. He shows you what he, you must do. And I'm looking for men and women in our church today who are willing to be guided, and they are willing to surrender and say, Lord, what must we do? Hallelujah. What must we do? Now, I am thinking in my own meditation and thinking, I am thinking the experience Paul of the Lord Jesus Christ shocked his life. He couldn't believe what has happened. He couldn't believe the light from heaven. He couldn't understand the voice that came. And nobody was being seen. And the voice said, you are persecuting me. He said, who are you? He heard the voice say, this is Jesus you are persecuting. That was the end of the story. He got out of there and was led like a child to Damascus, blind for three days. And then a person was sent by the Lord Go and help that man called Paul. <laughs> Paul got saved in a miraculous way. Not the way most of us got saved. I believe you got saved differently. But this one of Paul, he needed to be slapped. He needed to be made blind for him to know there is another Lord who is to be worshipped. Praise the Lord. And then Paul, after waking up, and after beginning to see, and after being led to the Lord, and after being taught about the Lord, he committed his life 100%. And he said, now I want to know this Jesus. I want to know this man. I want to know the power of his resurrection. Because when he resurrected, by the way, Paul is meeting Jesus after he had resurrected. So he, Jesus could not come down as a human being. He came, that's why they couldn't see him. Because he had been translated. So what was happening was the voice. So Jesus had died and resurrected. Now Paul says, I actually want to understand the power of resurrection. Hallelujah. This is where the message comes from. I want to understand this man, Jesus. I want to get deeper into Jesus. I want to know him and know the power that raised him up. And I want to share in his suffering. I want to walk with him. I want to suffer together with him. I want to also experience that death. Hallelujah. 
So I'm telling you, church, today, you need to reach a level where you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ in a deeper manner. Let us stop jokes. Let's stop pretending. Let's stop being Christians who are hoi hoi. You know, we should worship Christians. Do you know the word we should worship? We need to get out of our, 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 our bedrooms, out of our cocoons, out of the situation where we are, and stop being wish worship Christians. We need to begin to discover who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Somebody say amen. We need to be like Paul, who says, I want to know him. I want to know him. There is no better description of knowing him. I wish I had a better English to tell you more about knowing him. Because believers of today can never be understood. I can tell you the truth. A believer who comes to you and tells you a story, and you think it is true, but is calling you. I don't understand believers today. I think it is Mrs. Ketavi who sent us something yesterday in the couples. And the men, I tell you, women are praying for their husbands. You saw that? The husbands. And the man says, kiss the, the man or whoever you are kissing, the woman, on my behalf. Why, why would Joe kiss Joyce on my behalf? Why would you, why would you kiss your wife on my behalf? These are the Christians we have today. Confused in believers. I don't know whether they know where they are going. These are the believers we have today. And my brethren, if we have invested so much in this church because we love Jesus, let us make sure we go to heaven. How can you be so committed to do what you have done in this cathedral of worship and then you go to hell? What is the benefit? Why can you the spirit of evangelism is coming back. Why can't you just be a sinner, proper sinner? Become a thief, steal, build, build Gorofas in Nairobi. Become an a estate owner, own several houses. Become a billionaire and go to hell. So when you are in hell, you tell people, I am here rightfully. I went to hell because I did... I did, I sinned. I lived the world of this. Now if I find, Kamau, allow me to use you. If I, if I found, if Kamau was to go to hell. Now, yes, Kamau, why did you build a cathedral and then go to hell? Oh, then you say, I mean, you are in hell, then some guys who are just enjoying life out there. With the hotels, with the choppers, with the big things, living big. And they meet with Kamau in hell. Kamau, what? Why are you in hell? You did not enjoy like us. <laughs> so the best thing, believers, is that who, those of us who have accepted to be the way we are today, let us sacrifice up to the end. Let us deny ourselves and move towards the knowledge of Jesus Christ so that we know him and know the power that resurrected him and experience the suffering that Jesus Christ went so that at the end of the day we shall go to heaven. Praise the Lord. Why would I do what I've done so many years? I went to school. I learned. I have purpose. I can be a crook like any other person. I can be a thief. I can be a I can get corrupt and get tenders. I can impute big apartments in Kileleshua after corruption. And then I go to hell. Elisa will go there rightfully. I sinned. But as we have decided to be what we are today, Christians of GCI Utawala, can we be saved properly? Tell your neighbor nicely get saved properly. When a briefcase comes near you, please say no, you are born again. Don't say no, nowadays I don't do this. Say no, 
I am born again. I love Jesus. That's why I don't want this briefcase. If a nice woman comes around about you, tell her you are born again. Don't say, you know, you know, you know. I'm married. No, say you are born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Any kind of sin. The Bible tells us, flee. Flee from any. Any. Something that looks like sin. It may not even be sin. But something close to sin. Flee. Praise the Lord. We need Christians. Who oh, people can say there is unbeliever somewhere. I know that man. I know him. That is Paul. Paul says, I want to know the Lord. And the power that resurrected him from the grave. That is what I want to understand. And this was mesmerizing for Paul. How in God saved, in God saved in a unique way. And that's why I believe Paul wanted to know more about the Lord. Now, finally, brethren, the experience of Paul and Silas in the prison was another interesting experience that I believe kept wondering, Paul, or wondering, this Lord, how can I know him more? Because it was also a special encounter in prison. A special encounter in prison. Paul must have been left wanting to know Jesus more because of that unique experience. And may we get these experiences in this life today. Let's not just read the Gospels and say they happened in the Gospels. May they happen into our lives now. So that we may have that heart of loving God even much more. Because now, what happened is that Paul and Silas exorcised a demon from a, a lady who was a diviner in a city called the Atira. When they exhausted a demon, that demon of divination used to be a business to many people. There were many guys who used to do, use that woman in a divination. So she was soothing saying. She was a soothing saying. And I think they used to make money out of that. Now when the demon went, then the power went. <laughs> when the demon left, the power of Sudi saying left. The businessmen were not happy. And that is why Paul and the Silas found themselves in prison. Acts chapter 6, verse 22 to 31. The Bible says, And the multitude rose up together against them. That is Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, not into the normal prison, into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in stocks, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They first prayed and they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bones were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that, supposing that the prisoners had, had fled, had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou 
shall be saved and thy house. When I look at this story and this experience of Paul in prison, they are in prison, they decided to pray, and they decided to sing songs of praise to God. And in the process, there was an earthquake, and the prison's foundations were shaken, and the prison doors were open, and the bonds that were binding them were loosed, and they were free. And you know, I am thinking like now a human being. What is this power that came because we prayed and we sang praises? What is this power that brought earthquake? We have not asked for an earthquake. We were just praying and singing praises. Why has the earthquake come? Why has it blown open? the strong doors of the prison. And you know they were put into the inner room. The inner room has been more secured. And the doors were also blown open. What is this power that prevented the hardcore criminals from running away and escaping? The prison is wide open. What is this? I am thinking Paul must have been mesmerized by the power of Jesus Christ and the power of resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, I want to know this man more. How can we just sing songs? And earthquake comes and the prison's foundations are shaken and the doors have, have blown up and our, 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 our feet are broken and we are now free to walk. And then there is another power that comes to prevent the criminals from escaping from prison. Go and try that in committee. You will never see those guys again. They will run away. By the way, has anybody ever been to a serious prison like committee? You know committee is maximum. The doors that are there are heavy. Getting into those doors the way they are open, it is not easy. And then, them being blown up and open, and all the criminals are just there seated. They are not moving, they are not flying out, they are not interested in leaving. Paul and Silas have just sang a song, the way we sang in the morning, and he prayed in the morning. Earthquake comes. Paul must be wondering, I want to know this God more. Hallelujah. And you know, the Bible tells me, and greater things than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. Do you know that scripture? Now the Christians of today, why don't we use this scripture? That the greater power than, greater things than this that Jesus Christ indeed, shall he do? Why can't we do them today? So that people, the, the, the challenge is the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We need to know him more. We need to, I don't want to use that word. I, I, I wanted to say, we need to sleep in one bed. You know, that means you are together. You are so much close together that you share a bed. We need to be so closer with Jesus. So deeply knowing Jesus. So that when we say a word, it happens. When I prophesy, it happens. When I sing a song, gates are opened. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas were prisoners. They chose to sing and pray and praise God. Earthquake comes. And then Paul is also mesmerized by the jailer who comes. And now the prisoner becomes the boss. The prisoner became sir. The man comes and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Mwamba is not here. I would be enjoying Mwamba. By the way, he hangs on those lorries and preaching the gospel. Paul did not need to hang on those lorries and preach. He, he, oh, the happenings, the earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> we will shake everybody and they will come trembling and saying, Sus, what must I do to be born again? 
there is nowhere in the scripture we are told Paul preached to the jailer. Paul did it later. After he came and said, what must I do to be saved? He was already shaken by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of God, by what he saw. He came and knelt before them and said, what must I do to be saved? I don't even know who told him there is salvation. So this is the power that Paul wants to know and know it deeper. The power of his resurrection was so great that Paul says, I want to understand this thing. There is a secret I have not yet understood. And I can only understand it if I know the Lord more. There is something you are missing, church. There is something you have not known about Jesus. And I challenge you and myself to get into the knowledge of Jesus Christ even much more. And we shall be good brothers and sisters. Your yes will be yes. Your no will be no. Today I am not sure whether your yes is yes and your no is no. So najua. Nisaidie tu na kamiaka moja. Kesho nitakuletea. Kumbe you are just telling me that for me to give you. Your yes is not yes. Your no is no. no. You already know you will not return. But you are telling me I will give you tomorrow. Where are we going to meet, by the way? Sasita, I will be with it. Any the believers of today, we don't know where we are going. We are not sure where we are going. And that's why we must know Christ properly. Unaniskia. We must bow down and be, you know, it's like, can we get saved again? You know, we just need to say, Lord, I think I've been saved, but now <laughs> I feel like I want to be resaved again. You know, there's a time you feel like, Lord, I just want to, something is missing in my life. And that is the gospel I'm preaching today. As we enter into the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as we celebrate that next Sunday, I want us to know that we need to change the way we, be, we, we are today. We need to change. We need to be true brothers and sisters. There is a song we used to sing a few years ago. Give me that whole time. Religion. I can tell you. We are brethren, we are brethren. Where we used to hug without looking aside. Today, if I tell the church, go and greet each one, some of you will be looking, who should I greet? I don't think I should greet Caroline there. I, so and so annoyed me the other day. You are looking aside. That's why when you tell, greet your neighbor, some people begin to wonder now which neighbor do I greet? Because we have enmity in the house of the Lord. We don't fear God to the point of knowing. If you have an enemy in the, in the church, then there is a problem with you as a believer, isn't it? Should not have enemies. Hallelujah, somebody. Are you hearing me? We should never have enemies. We should not have concubines in the house of God. <laughs> eh? Unaona ndada? Now, and you are born again. Tunazumbua wandada na tumeokoka. Tumeokoka wakofu gani. Tumezumbua watu. Sasa hata tumeowa na tukona mabibi. Lakini istiyo tunazumbua wanawake. Iyo wakofu ni wakofu ya kuenda wapi. We need to know the Lord. We need to know that Jesus. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. That is important for the church today. And we shall be walking in the holiness that the Lord wants. In the righteousness that the Lord wants. Some people in the, in the, in the internet and in some places I have seen in social media are arguing whether paying a tithe is correct. The believers of today arguing about the tithe. Why don't you want to give money to the house of God? 
Somebody said, I can't be just taking this money to that pastor. My friend, I don't need your money. <laughs> Give the money to the Lord. Death. That is why we struggle when we don't give. When we can't give an offering, we struggle. When we can't tithe our salaries, we struggle. We are living in the time of grace. So then grace takes care of the tithes and you know those things. My friend, we are going to suffer. Let's come out and know the Lord and the power of his resurrection. And the Lord is going to be a blessing to us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for today.